Well, good morning, everyone. Um, again, my name is Karen Commander. I am the Director of Education and the Health Literacy Institute at St. Vincent Charity Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, St. Vincent Charity is a 250-bed, urban, not-for-profit teaching hospital in the heart of downtown Cleveland. It is one of five hospitals of the Sisters of Charity Health System. Uh, there are three hospitals in the Cleveland and Akron area and two hospitals in South Carolina. So we're spread out a bit. Um, so first of all, I'd like to express my gratitude for the invitation and the opportunity to share uh, the work that we've been doing now the last uh, about six years. Um, St. Vincent Charity uh, was awarded a grant from the Sisters of Charity Foundation back in 2007 in collaboration with Project Learn. Now that's an adult learning center uh, located in Cleveland. And uh, so that's where our work really started. At that time, I, I was director of education. I was, I was brought to the table for discussions. We had community discussions. Um, we met with other grantees from the foundation. And at that time, I can tell you, I had no idea what health literacy was all about. But once I started getting more information, you know, the light bulb went on. It was, you know, I, as I was introduced, I have many years of nursing experience. Um, so finally, there was a name to an issue that I always, I always thought about. Um, personally, I have three siblings with chronic illnesses, and I, I'm sure some of you in the room have experienced the same thing. Um, but oftentimes saying, gosh, what do other people do? You know, I'm there to advocate, to translate for them. Um, so I finally started understanding what this was all about. So one of our first initiatives was to form a health literacy team, uh, which we did, like I said, back in 2007. And it was combined with our current patient education committee. Um, I can tell you this team now has been in place uh, all these years. We meet monthly. There's about 12 members. All the members represent different disciplines in the hospital, ranging from pulmonary, radiology, diabetes educator, mission and ministry. Um, and someone else mentioned marketing. I can tell you that our marketing director is a real cheerleader of health literacy efforts, and she also is a member of our team. So what I hope to share with you in the next few minutes is um, just the work that, that we've been able to accomplish in these last six years and correlate them a little bit with um, the 10 attributes. And at the end, I, I hope to answer uh, the five questions that were posed. So one of our big initiatives initially uh, was training. And we have found through the years that uh, this training has needed to be ongoing. So the first, first initiative was to train the team. Um, you know, we've had a patient education team in place for many years, so now the team needed to be trained on health literacy principles. As part of the grantees, we were able to attend the American Medical Association Train the Trainer program back then, and then we, we kind of spread out those principles through the other members of the team. What we found is, as far as training, what we needed to do initially is train the leadership team. And basically what I mean by training initially was increasing awareness. Like myself, many folks were not aware that health literacy was even an issue. So we needed to get buy-in, um, so we did train the leadership team initially. Another big audience, of course, was our nurses, our nurses and our medical residents. So again, the teaching initially was on awareness, um, sharing some tools such as plain language and teach back. And since the beginning, our training really has evolved. Um, initially, back in 2007, a big focus was on looking at our low literate population, but as more tools became available through the years, like the Universal Precautions Toolkit, we've incorporated a lot of different uh, techniques into our ongoing training. Um, we also have trained every caregiver at the department level. Um, we do have support from all of our department directors, um, so members of our team have been invited to different staff meetings in every hospital department. So again, we share health literacy principles. What does health literacy really mean? Um, we share our definition of health literacy, which is uh, not only the patient's ability to understand and act on health information, but also the provider's ability to share that information so the patients then in turn can act on it. Um, we've also incorporated uh, health literacy into new employee orientation, uh, which 
takes place monthly. So every caregiver that starts at St. Vincent um, gets about an hour of training in health literacy. Um, we've also expanded our training to include annual whole house competencies, so it's included for every caregiver annually, as well as our clinical competencies, uh, which are also annually. With attribute eight, we're looking at our materials, our print and AV materials. And again, one of our first objectives was to um, take a look and assess our current patient education material. So we did a random sampling of that, and what we found was our average uh, reading grade level of our own homegrown materials was about 12th grade reading level. We also did an assessment with the vendor that we were using uh, that many of our nurses used to print out patient education materials, and we found that was even at a much higher level. Um, I'm not going to name the vendor, but we've stopped using that vendor. Uh, many of those education sheets were very, very lengthy, some up to even 17 pages long for, for one discharge um, instruction. So right now I can say that all of our homegrown patient education materials have been revised to an average fifth to sixth grade reading level. We are now um, using a different vendor. Uh, and they also provide materials at the fifth to sixth grade reading level. All are available in Spanish. That's a, a high percentage, not a high percentage, but a high, higher percentage of our mi minorities um, population that visit us at St. Vincent. And uh, many of the sheets are available in multiple languages. Um, we're also looking at, right now, interpreter services. We just finished demoing a vendor, several different vendors, and we've decided to go with a video system. Because we do have a high uh, population of a deaf community, uh, we needed the availability for translation for American Sign Language. Um, so that's in the process of purchase right now. We've also purchased uh, health education videos that are available in every inpatient room. Um, and we do have a, a content guide. All of the nurses have been trained on this to encourage their patients to uh, look at the, the guide. If, for example, if a patient's going for a cardiac catheterization, the nurse will go in and talk to the patient about that and encourage them to view these videos. Another uh, big piece of the work that we've done is involving the adult learner students from Project Learn. So they really have been involved a lot in our different focus groups. Um, they were involved in when we started development of our own print materials. We would bring them on board to have them take a look at it, see does this make sense to you, and we would revise until it did make sense. Um, we also utilized the adult learner uh, students for a navigation tracer. Um, so what we did was we invited these students to come at three different occasions and we met in the front lobby and what we asked them to do was to go find a department. So we would say, please go find C uh, CAT scan, um, radiology, and then we then would find, uh, meet them at their final de destination to find out how difficult or easy was it for them to find their way. And what we found was that our signage was not all that great. Uh, they appreciated the help of the other caregivers, but they said the signage really didn't make sense. So based on that, in the support of uh, senior leadership, we held further focus groups with these adult learner students. We met with them with the list of all of our departments in the hospital and asked them what our sign should read. So now instead of radiology, our sign says x-ray. Um, we also have an increase in a Spanish-speaking population, so when we went to our new signage, every sign um, also was written in Spanish. Uh, what I found was interesting, and someone mentioned sometimes, you know, language may be benign but not make sense, and that was a big lesson learned for myself. Uh, one of the students, when we were talking about the admitting department, uh, they said, well, if that's a place you tell me where I go to check in to get blood work and I'm not being admitted, why do you call it admitting department? So that made a lot of sense to me, so now that's called patient check-in. So now all the new signage has been implemented um, for about, oh, about a year now. And this is just a slide to show you um, which sometimes things that are right in front of us or right in front of me I'm not even aware of. Um, but the top picture on the left is a picture of our, our main lobby and as you will note there is absolutely no signage there. So um, after the tracer we found well we probably should put a sign at the front desk that says information. So it says information and it's also um, in Spanish. 
addressing high-risk populations um, and high-risk uh, procedures. One big area that we targeted, and I know several other people have mentioned this, uh, but we revised our process for heart failure education. And again, I'm a stealer, a plagiarizer as well. Um, we certainly uh, found that the heart failure booklet from North Carolina uh, was a great tool for us. Um, and uh, assessing the response from our patients, we found that it, that it is working pretty well. Um, we have, we've also revised how we ask the questions and incorporated changes into our computer documentation for the nurses so that we do follow um, a guide of assessing for knowledge, skills, and attitude. So for example, on day one, the nurses address uh, the teaching based on knowledge. Day two questions, the questions are reformatted basically covering the same information, or now we're looking at skills. And then finally, on, by day three, we're looking at the attitude. So all of the information is the same, but the questions are reframed. Also with heart failure education now, we have involved our pharma clinical pharmacists. Um, they come up and do a lot of the medication teaching with our patients. They're present at discharge to go over med medication reconciliation with the patients. And they also perform callbacks. So when the patient, after the patient is discharged, the pharmacists do call back these uh, patients to ask them how well they're doing with their medicines, what questions do they have, how are they doing with their diet, are they able to weigh themselves. Um, we've also found that with our population, many of them did not have scales at home. You know, after we did further questioning, especially questions like um, what is a barrier perhaps and what will make prevent you from weighing yourself, we found many of them didn't have scales. So now we provide a scale for any patient who does not have a scale to weigh themselves at home. Another big area is informed consent. Now this is in process. Again, this is uh, something that we've borrowed. It was from um, Minnesota. And uh, it's a informed consent that is a general informed consent that uh, covers um, everything in plain language. Uh, leadership support has been enormous. Um, we have uh, been able to develop a Health Literacy Institute with its own budget, which sets its own team goals. We've incorporated everything in our, our policies which include use of plain language, universal precautions, and the teach-back technique. Um, so February 20, uh, 2007 um, was the beginning of our work, init initial interest. The primary goal was to develop a program model which would institutionalize health literacy at St. Vincent. So that's been our primary goal, and I think we're well on our way. So we've been collaborating with Project Learn, but again, the initial strategies were getting that uh, obtaining the buy-in from the CEO and senior leadership. Um, we've had a changeover of administration two or three times, and each time sharing the stories, the personal stories, showing the statistics um, really have made a difference. Um, I've already talked about the policy re revision, uh, three administrations, supportive de department directors. They all understand the importance of health literacy and are really supportive in all of our work. Barriers basically is staff time. Um, we're a small department. It's one hat that I wear uh, for whole house uh, education. Um, so having more time uh, to do health literacy work would be great. Another major barrier is um, lack of buy-in from the attending physicians. So that's our big next target audience uh, to get going on this. Sustaining changes, um, like I've mentioned, we've included it in orientation monthly mandatory annual competencies, ongoing conferences. Uh, in 2012, we did put on a uh, conference series. So we put on four different short workshops, writing for easier reading workshops, and that all culminated in our October Health Literacy Month inaugural Ohio Health Literacy Conference, where we were able to get about 200 attendees um, of physicians, nurses, wide array of disciplines. Um, we've also done several annual Health Literacy Month events where we involved community members. And um, we've been adding to our website, and since we've had our conference in October, we've initiated a blog on our website so that we can continue the conversation. We're reaching out to other institutions now to broaden our work. Uh, we really believe in collaboration and partnership, so that's one of our primary goals. Finally, uh, to sustain our work, um, this is a graphic that our team devised, and it incorporates five steps to better health literacy, 
Um, in this graphic, we have laminated and posted in every department in all of our healthcare clinics as a daily reminder um, for all of our healthcare providers to incorporate these principles in all of their communication. So with that, I thank you.